Hey, good morning. Let's go over today's trade plan. So on Friday, the market balanced within Thursday's range. So Friday ended up being an inside day. And at this point, we know that the market is gearing up for a short-term directional move. And we've seen a lot of volume accumulate at the 2359 level. So that's a key high volume node. And quite often, we see the market putting in short-term directional moves, launching off of these key high volume nodes. So we're going to keep an eye on how the market is trading around the 59 HVN with the idea that it's very likely that we're either going to break down and take out Thursday's lows of 53 quarter to 54, or we're going to go higher and take out the 65.75 to 67.75 initial resistance, which marks last week's high. Now, in order to break out to the upside, we would have to see broad market strength participation from the other markets and sustained upside momentum. The other markets recently have been holding up a bit better. So if the S&P does start heading higher with some decent momentum, we know that the other markets are already supporting that upside move. And as long as we're not seeing any warning signs in those other markets, we could get a upside move beyond initial resistance. A breakout above initial resistance would confirm the buyers in control and from there we can head higher into the 74 to 76 area the 77 75 to 78 75 and even 80 quarter to 82 quarter we'll have to be cautious on the short side at 74 to 76 and we'll have to see kind of how the market approaches it if it's very exhausted into that area then it can still attract some sellers and we can get some profit taking but if we've already balanced ahead of that zone then we'll have to be cautious 77, 75, 78, 75 is a high odds area as well as 80 quarter to 82 quarter where responsive sellers can be active and we can see some profit taking at least on the day time frame. On the downside, if we get a break below 53 quarter to 54, we'll have to be careful at 47 to 49 because even though we can get some responsive buying there, a break below 53 quarter to 54 in itself would confirm sell side in control at least on the smaller time frames so 47 to 49 calls for caution again we'll have to see how the market approaches it we could quite easily go down into the 42 half to 44 half zone and even the 40 half high volume node before we get a good enough buy response and if we're going down on broad market weakness and sustained downside momentum and the other markets are also breaking lower then we don't necessarily have to stop at 42 half to 44 half so again that's something that will have to be gauged in real time so heading into the open our short-term bias continues to be neutral we are open to a move in either direction and we are going to have to assess the situation in real time to figure out which side is really more dominant holding above 56 to 58 and holding above the 59 high volume node would signal buyers a bit more dominant but until we get a break either above initial resistance or below Thursday's lows and below initial support, we're not really going to know which side is really firmly in control because until then, we're just stuck in a range. But if we can take out initial resistance, that serves as a confirmation that buyers are dominant. And if we can take out Thursday's lows, then that serves as a confirmation that sellers are becoming more dominant on the smaller time frame. And that can lead to 47.49, 42 half to 44 half, and potentially even lower. So those are the main ideas heading into the open. Let's see how ES responds to pre-market support and the 59 high volume node. Let's see how the internals are shaping up in real time, and we'll take it from there.